Senator from Arizona. Mr. President, I'll be opposing cloture on the nominations of Melvin Watt to be the director of the Federal Housing Finance Administration and Patricia Millett to the U.S. Circuit Court Judge for the District of Columbia Circuit. I do so because I believe that neither candidate should be nominated, should be affirmed by the United States Senate at this time. I have been privileged many times to be a part of groups of senators who were able to come together and negotiate agreements to end the gridlock surrounding nominees, avert the quote nuclear option, and allow the Senate to move forward with our work on behalf of the American people. My work in these groups, which is often referred to as gangs, has won me both praise and condemnation and has often put me at odds with some in my party. In 2005, when Republicans were in the majority, and we were about to exercise a, quote, nuclear option on President Bush's judicial nominees that were being filibustered by the other side that was in the minority, part of the agreement addressed future nominees, this agreement, which has held all these years. And I quote from the agreement, Signatories will exercise their responsibilities under the advice and consent clause of the United States Constitution in good faith. Nominees should only be filibustered under extraordinary circumstances, and each signatory must use his or, own, or her own discretion and judgment in determining whether such circumstances, circumstances exist. As to both the nominees we are considering today, I find and it is my judgment as a United States Senator that extraordinary conditions exist. The agreements that I have entered into, including the beginning on the motion to proceed, including last July on NLRB nominations, have all included preserving the right of individual senators to exercise their rights. And if we go to the nuclear option, which I understand some of my colleagues are now frustrated to the point where they'd like to, meaning that 51 votes will now determine either nominees or other rules of the Senate, we will destroy the very fabric of the United States Senate, and that is that it requires a larger than numerical majority in order to govern. I understand the frustration of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. I think it's interesting that well over half of my colleagues in the Senate have been here less than uh, six, seven years. The majority of my friends on the other side have not been in the minority. Majority of my friends, my colleagues on this side have not been in the majority. I've been in both. And I've watched when the Republican, this side was in majority out of frustration that we wanted to curtail the 60 vote criteria and go to 51 because we were frustrated over the appointment of judges. That was back in 2005. I watched my colleagues on the other side want to go to 51 votes because of their frustration over the motion to proceed. I've watched and understand the frustration the majority feels because they feel their obligation to make this body function efficiently. The truth is that this body does not function efficiently, nor was it particularly designed to. Now, is there more gridlock than there used to be? In many respects, yes. And I believe, with all my heart, that what we just did to the American people in the shutdown of the government may motivate colleagues of mine on this side, as well as the other side, not to do this kind of stuff again. Our pop approval rating with the American people is sunk to all-time lows. And they're going to see another expression of gridlock when we go take these votes today. But the cure is going to have repercussions for generations to come in this body. There is no reason to have a House and Senate if we go to simple 51 vote rule in this body. And my colleagues should understand it. And someday, someday, this side of the aisle will be in the majority. And this side of the aisle will feel frustration as we did when we were in the majority because of blockage from the other side of the aisle. I urge patience on the part of the majority leader. I urge patience on the part of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. And most of all, 
I urge the kind of comedy between leadership on both sides and individuals on both sides. I see the senator from Virginia here, one who has been one of those who has worked very hard to engender that in this body. But can't we work some of these things out without having a showdown every time uh, on this floor? This won't, this, this dispute won't affect the American people. What we just did in the shutdown certainly injured the lives and well-being of millions of innocent Americans. Well, maybe we've learned from that. But I urge my colleagues to understand that the votes that are being taken on these two issues are in keeping with the agreement that I joined 13 of my colleagues, Republican and Democrat, back in 2005, that states signatories, those that made that agreement, will exercise their responsibilities under the advice and consent clause of the United States Constitution in good faith. In good faith. I am acting with my vote in good faith. I see my friend, uh, the majority leader on the floor of the Senate, and I hope he understands that this action is being taken in good faith. But I also understand the frustration that my friend, the majority leader, feels. So I urge my colleagues that we get through this, we sit down and do some more conversations and negotiations so that we can avoid this kind of cliff experience which has earned us the profound and strong and well-justified disapproval of the American people. Mr. President, I yield the floor.